So we have reviewed in the first linear kinetics one video two laws of um, Newton's first two laws of motion and those were the law of inertia so an object stays at rest or at constant velocity unless a force is acted on it and so there's the concept of inertia that's related to mass but not always to size because of the concept of density and we also did um, the F equals MA law, the second law, and then we derived that into a more usable form um, into impulse and momentum. And we can start to describe activities as impulse, the impulse you apply, and the momentum that re results. Third law is this law, the law of reaction. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So as you sit or stand and watch this video, you are applying a force to the ground or to a chair, and the chair is applying an equal and opposite force back to you. Otherwise, there would be some motion and you would follow the floor, you would fall through the floor, fall off the chair, etc. Um, so during walking, when we, think we were looking at the AP forces, right, those lower forces that are kind of bimodal, when you're um, at heel contact, you're pushing forward, so the ground is pushing you back, that's creating the braking force, and then when you are at the push-off phase, you are pushing behind you on the ground, and the ground is pushing you forward, and that would be the propulsion phase. All right, and then a, a final concept is friction. Now friction, there's two types of friction, static and kinetic. Um, we all have a, a bit of a concept of friction, that it's between two surfaces, um, we know that ice um, or even water decreases friction. Um, trying to ice skate on carpet would be a, a high frictional concept. And then there's another video that's posted on curling, which is an interesting sport to look at friction. But let's just go through static and kinetic friction. So static friction, it resists movement, okay, in, in the horizontal or the AP or ML planes. And the force of friction is due to this coefficient of friction, and the S implies static friction, and this R term, which is the reaction force, which is basically the weight of the object. So it's not just, friction is not just between the two surfaces of objects, but it takes into account the weight. So the coefficient describes the interaction between two surfaces, and then this R term is the weight or how heavy the objects are. You also have the kinetic force of friction, which has a separate um, coefficient of friction with, denoted by K, and this R term, with the, which is the weight. But the kinetic friction is always less than static friction. And that, if you think about pushing a, a big dresser somewhere else in your room, getting it to move always takes a bit more force than continuing it moving across the carpet. All right, so the static friction, getting something to move, is always higher than kinetic. And here's an image of this. So you have your static friction, which is higher. Once you get something moving, the kinetic friction force is much lower to keep that object in motion. All right, what about this reaction force or weight term? The, the image on the left is a, a sled, right? Pulling a sled on snow should be fairly easy low frictional component. However, instead of this small child, if you had a linebacker from the Raiders, that would be a lot, um, you, would, you would require a lot more force to overcome the, the um, frictional component to, to actually get that sled to move. All right, but then once it's moving, it's al always easier. Now, if I said you can still pull this child, but you had to pull them over, uh, grass that might be a little more friction than, say, the snow. Now on the right we have um, a sled, so um, used in, in many football activities. So here this coach is has two, two roles for standing on this sled. From our mechanical standpoint, the coach is increasing that reaction force, or the weight, so it's increasing the frictional force that these players need to provide to move that sled. But once they move the sled, then the, the, friction, the force to keep the sled moving sh is always easier. 
Now the second thing that this coach can do is basically he has a great vantage point to encourage or yell at his players to motivate them a bit.